I want to address this question that people always have when they're like, oh wait, wouldn't atmospheric pressure, just the pressure of gas in the atmosphere, shouldn't that crush things, right? Shouldn't that like crush anything because there's that high pressure? Well, no, and I'll tell you why. Here's like a can. Imagine this is like a metal can and it's open in the air. All right, this is the kind of thing that people are like, oh, well, if there's pressure in the atmosphere, shouldn't the pressure that's being exerted, shouldn't it crush this can? They say, oh, well, you have this, you know, ball pit of air molecules, and these arrows indicate the pressing that happens on it. Why don't they all push in and crush the can? And here's why. Because this can is open to the air, or even if it's closed, there's a whole bunch of air inside this, okay? And so the air that's inside this can, it pushes too which means that it pushes back on the other side of the can. The air pushes on one side, on the outside, but the air also pushes back on the inside. So all of these pushes, all of these forces on the outside are balanced by forces from the air as well, pushing in the other direction. So the can doesn't crush, because you've got it going both ways. We can crush this can, though if we suck air out of it, all right? So if we took this can and we attached the top of it to like a vacuum and started sucking air out, then we would have less and less air on the inside to push against the air on the outside, okay? So it doesn't crush because the forces are balanced, but as would we begin to remove air here, the pushes here become less and less and less strong until they can't push against the hard atmospheric pressure anymore, and then the can crushes because the atmospheric pressure is just as strong, but the amount of air inside this can, here are my tiny little arrows to represent the tiny little amount that the remaining small number of gas particles can exert, they're not enough to balance out the big push from the atmospheric pressure and the can crushes, okay? We also see the balance of pressures in other things in daily life. In fact, it's the whole idea of atmospheric pressure and pressures balancing that allow you to drink out of a straw, okay? So check this out. This is my really ghetto diagram of a glass of water. Here's like the water level, and here's a straw in it, okay? Now, right now what's happening is we have the water being pushed on by the atmospheric pressure. There's an arrow. Here's another arrow. And there's air inside the straw, too, because the straw is exposed to the environment. So there's an arrow of the atmospheric pressure in the straw. And these should all be the same amount. Like, it's the same amount of pressure pushing everywhere. So that's what our glass of water with a straw in it looks like, okay? But then what happens when you start to suck out of the straw, right? You start sucking on the straw, and the first thing that it does is it pulls air out of the straw. And when it pulls air out of the straw, that sucks the water up into it. But here's why. You start sucking on the straw, you remove air from the straw, and that means that there's not as much air here to push down out of the water. So let me replace this by a little arrow, okay? You've removed the air from the straw, but the pressure from the atmosphere is just as great. So we've still got these big pushes from the atmospheric pressure. This means that since these pushes are stronger than the small push that's now on the water in the straw, these guys can press down and push the water up into the straw. That's why water comes up into your mouth when you suck on the straw. 